Hi, everybody. I have got the, oh, she's so beautiful, the most beautiful <laughs> Sarah Parrish. Oh, my God. How are you, my lovely? I'm all right. Do you know what? I'm all right. I'm surviving. Um, it's been a tough old lockdown, this one, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, quite hard work, I think, because we can't get out, you know, that it's too cold. Uh, we're stuck in the house. It's been it's been a long old slog, but we're getting there. I got a Peloton bike the other day. What's that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of these posh bikes that you cycle on. It's got like a big screen on the front of it and uh, you put you put the screen on you can go live you can do live classes and it's basically fit american people going come on you can do this cycle harder harder so you're allowed to shout back Fuck yeah, off! shut up <laughs> i hate you and your gorgeous body and your 20 year old ah. yeah. <laughs> that's what i do i just sit on the bike and shout at them do you know what actually that's a, that's a that's a very good bit of advice because one of the things i have totally lost interest in apart from life in general. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mentioned to you earlier on that um, I actually had to ask one of my children if she could see me because I wasn't a hundred percent sure I was actually still alive. And <laughs> this, this sounds really bizarre, but I actually meant it. I really, was, it I, was it because were they just sort of doing that thing that, that, that families do when they just completely ignore you? Or were oh God, they no, I just... Wish. I wish. <laughs> I think I think they've got to the point now that talking to me is actually quite entertaining. Um, and so they, they don't know what's going to come back. Oh, no, I've, I, I, I this is the week. This is and, and, and if you combine the menopause with lockdown, you've you've got a, just an absolute perfect recipe for murder. You know, when I say self murder, I mean, I'm, I'm not making jokes. But I actually could not quite work out whether I was actually here or not. Because there's no affirmation anywhere. You can't go out and even when you talk to people, they kind of back away. That might just be me. That might no, I think that's the sort of whiff of madness about the menopausal woman. It, there's a look of death in, in your eye, isn't there? Of I could either like shake your hand and we could have a nice chat or, or I could stab you. Yeah. No, and, and, <laughs> and it really is that kind of bingo lottery type thing. You know, you just yeah. do not know. And in fairness, I think as a menopausal woman, you don't know what you're going to do. You no, know, I you never know what I'm going to do. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Either. <laughs> I just, I put on earlier that, you know, yesterday was Valentine's. And the only thing that cheered me up was that um, Ed, my husband, um, found the rugby match. I don't know if you watched the, watched the rugby yesterday, but the referee was speaking franglais. And it really irritated him. And that made my day. I didn't need a car. What's Franglais? What's that? Talking half English, half French. Oh, and that's watching annoying. my husband get really irritated was just like, yes. <laughs> because I, I can't, I mean, bless his heart. I, I think men are suffering maybe more than women because of us. Oh, definitely. I mean, I, my moods are all over the place. Um, yeah. You know, literally, I, I go through um, probably 55 in an hour. It's quite, it's quite, yeah, no, it's fascinating. It's a, you know, what's next? What's I next? just get very, rat. I'm just very short tempered. Well, not short, I don't get ratty, but I just, it's internal. You know, I kind of keep a lid on it, but internally I have no patience. No patience for the things that I used to be able to, I think the estrogen used to soften the edges of my irritation and now that's gone. You know, uh, 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 the silly questions that people ask, you know, is the, what are we having for what are we having for supper? Just that is enough to make me take a fork out of the out of the, out of the cupboard and stab someone. <laughs> and what is it with this? Why do they come to us? I don't every, know. Every single day. What's for dinner? <laughs> the cupboard. There's a cupboard through there. It's called the larder. The, I don't know. It has food in it. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got time. Whereas, like you say, in the past, it would be, oh, darling, whatever, you know, do you fancy a bit of pesto, a bit of pasta? Yeah. Fuck off, make your own food. It's there. You there. wrote the shopping list. <laughs> they write. <won't. laughs> <laughs> oh god it's i'm terrible, foul i'm absolutely foul but in a way it's quite it's quite freeing in a way i mean it, you know it, it's quite it's quite a freeing feeling to sort of not i just not give a fuck do you yeah. know what I mean? I kind of go, I don't care. 
I don't care if if you get really angry with me about this. This is how I feel right now. Do you know? Whereas before I'd be quite sort of like, oh, I better be careful. Now I it it I just don't care. Yeah, I think I've come to that age where you just go there. There is nothing now, really, that could, that that can happen to me. You know, I've gone through periods, gone through childbirth, going through menopause. It's all pretty awful. So yeah. you know, yeah. Go, and then, and then, then, what are them? What do they get? An enlarged prostate? Oh. An enlarged prostate. Yeah, yeah. They're going to get loads of sympathy for that one. A kick, <laughs> a nice big toe cap boot, right in the middle. A little, little, little more enlarged now, darling. <laughs> but have you found I mean you know because there's lots of physical symptoms and you know we, we can talk about that till, till the, the cows come home but let's not bore people but I it's the psychological ones for me I mean um the memory I have no yes memory. the brain fog I, that is that was a real problem for me actually and I found it because I've got to learn lines I found when I was perimenopausal about three years ago I've had a real problem remembering my lines and just sort of taking the time to focus to actually look at a script. It was about, you know, I'd have about three things in front of me that I had to do in the in the day. And I would just sit and stare at them for ages, sort of procrastinating, really, sort of going, oh, I'd, I don't really know which one to start. And I just couldn't, I had, it wasn't lack of motivation. It was brain fog. I just didn't really know where to start or how to start. And my, and it still happens now. Like the other day I was trying to think of a word. I was writing an email, trying to think of a really simple word. I think it was potentially or something like that. And I was going, what is that word? What is that word that means, it, you know, it might happen? What is it? I had to, I had to email thesaurus. <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, download the source. And I could, it was just ridiculous. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't think of simple words that I know all the time, which is quite frightening as well. You kind of think, oh my God, is it menopause? How am I getting dementia? What's wrong with me? You know, and I think my husband gets quite ratty sometimes because sometimes I just, he'll say a name of someone, you know, oh, Colin, somebody rang about, and I just go, who's, who's that? I have no idea who that is. <laughs> <laughs> God, you know, no, I, 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 I want to give all. you a cast iron because uh, this started for me a long, long time ago. I think I'd mentioned it. I, I went surgically into it when the children were relatively young and I went through the joy of permission slips. And I'm, that, I'm not going to say, you, yeah, you know, when they had to go on Permission for, for school trips and stuff. Oh, my God. I mean, the, the amount of trips my kids miss because they miss, miss permission slip here. Um, but I wrote a letter to the school um, saying that they needed to stop um, being unkind to both me and my children because I forget because I suffered from this um, very rare but um, no, nonetheless very um, uh, serious disease called craft disease. Have you heard of craft? <laughs> can't can't remember the fucking thing. That's what it means. R A F T. Can't remember a fucking thing. And I said, now look. And, and I promise you, the woman, behind, the secretary at the school literally said, I actually have to leave the room now to go to the loo because I'm menopausal and my vagina is about to leave the building. <laughs> there, 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 there is your cast iron alibi, but it is frightening. You're absolutely right. And I think what, what's really, I mean, for me, I was lucky because I was told by my surgeon, um, I'm about to spay you, essentially. You know, you, you, you yeah, yeah. Um, she yeah, her yeah. name yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was being, I was being turned from Emma into Edward, and oh. um, and she did warn me. She said, "You're tomorrow morning. You are going to wake up even more of a lunatic than you are now." And that, oh was, my god, yeah, 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 yeah. You can imagine. And this is the woman who had to um, pee in a cup to check I wasn't pregnant before they did all this, put it on the bin, and then slammed the bin with my foot <laughs> and sent the urine all up the bloody wall. Oh, brilliant. And then out of pure panic, pulled what I thought was the bloody flushing thing and ended up sending everybody running around because I did the... <laughs> so alerted the entire hospital to the urine and situation. The fact that you'd splash your own way over yeah, the Yeah, it was everywhere. So they knew straight away that they had a problem on their hands. In fact, I got a round of applause when I left the hospital. They were quite glad. <laughs> but yeah, it is, it is the brain fog. Because I would imagine in your job, I mean, not only have you got to remember lines, but you've also got to get your head into character as well, whilst remembering yeah. those lines. And I would you, imagine you have some kind of technique which just gets completely removed. 
by the men. It, all of it's removed. And the most important thing as well is is is, co is confidence because to 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 get you know to do acting even if you've been doing it for years like me you still have to have when you start a job and a, a quite a large amount of confidence to take that first step to to show you the character that you created you know and and do your first scene because you know all the directors come up and go what you're not going to do it like that are you <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I mean get, get rid of her. Um, so, and that's gone. That confidence is gone because you can't depend. You haven't got that backup of your memory of, of all of those things that you used to, you know, dig from. It's, it's all gone. So it, it was a really hard time for me. I found it, yeah, re I went through a period of going, oh my God, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this anymore. Because if I can't show up and turn up with confidence and you know, being able to persuade the cast, the rest of the cast, the crew and the director that I can do this, then I'm not going to be able to get away with it. And yeah, it was a really, it was a difficult, but it didn't last for long. It, it was more, it was psychological. And I had to really just sit down and go, you know, you can do this. You know what's happening to your body. It's not you, something else. But it takes a lot to be, to do that, you know, because it feels so real. It feels like you are losing your mind at times, doesn't it? Well, the reality the, the reality is is that you you sort of are, um, yeah. And, and and that's I mean one of the things that um, I see a lot, especially with my blog. I mean, my blog is all about you know me falling out of cars because I forget to take my seatbelt off, and everybody knows the story of me taking the dog to the vet to for his, for his vaccinations, for getting the dog. Um, <laughs> you know, oh, I've done that. Um, the amount of things that I've, you know, I've, I've, I've reported my car stolen several times because I've driven to school and then walked home and the car's not been on the driveway. Oh, the, mad stuff. Reported my, my car stolen in Tesco's car park and I've gone in my husband's car. Just, and, and, and it, but, but in the midst of all this, what people don't warn you, and I do get hundreds of messages from women who say, I, w I have literally woken up this morning full of anxiety. Now, anxiety to me, I mean, I've been brought up with the word anxiety, just being me in meaning that you're worried about something specific. Maybe it's a dental appointment or um, I don't know, you maybe you've had a mammogram and you, you're slightly worried. So it, there's something tangible to be worried about. But mm. with the menopause, actually, you wake up frightened of life. You wake mm. up frightened of, like you say, your own ability. I mean, I, it happened to me this morning and I'm on HRT. I'm, I'm under, um, maybe you're the same, under specialist care because I think <laughs> my husband thought I <laughs> yeah, straight jackets and padded cells were just not enough and we couldn't go <laughs> so, um, But yeah, so I'm on, you know, I'm, I'm on all this, all this stuff, but still, you know, it seeps through. And as I say, this morning, I asked one of the children, can you see me? That was how... I had woken up this morning with no confidence whatsoever in my own ability just to be a human being mm -hmm. and, and silly tasks that present themselves to you that would yeah. normally just be, oh, well, I'm just going to, you know, get that done, walking the dog. Walking the dog this morning, I got myself into a pickle about only because the ground has gone from being really hard to really soft overnight. And there were two falls, one of them that involved a hole. I mean, there's a wonderful, I'm going to put a picture of it, a rabbit hole that I've warned my husband about a thousand times. And then I fell down it this morning because um, I forgot it was there. But yeah, the anxiety is debilitating. Yeah. And I would imagine yeah. what you do, you know, that this, you've got that on top of all the mood swings and, yeah, the, it was horrible. and the lack of memory. How have you done it? Yeah. It's, it's horrible. I mean, I tell you, about this time last year, oh, actually it was, yeah, a year ago, Jan January, last January, I was, prob I was probably at my worst, I think. I was in, I sort of had lost all my self-worth. It was a really funny feeling. And I remember waking up on New Year's Day and going, oh my God, and I've got, I keep a diary. And because um, I ended up going to see a therapist just to sort of go, I feel so down. And a lot of what she said is, well, you, you're really menopausal. You know, this is what happened. And in the diary, I mean, I read the diary and this is quite funny, actually. This is quite telling. It was in, in the diary just before lockdown last year. I wrote, I just can't cope anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. I just need the world to stop for about five days. Five days. <laughs> stop for about a bloody year but for me oh, when that lockdown happened, nice one, Sarah. I know sorry about that guys 
Um, but for me, it was kind of like, oh my God, you know, it's happening. The world is actually stopping. And it was actually quite a good thing for me at that point in the menopause because it took all the pressure of work away because there was no work, all the pressure of competition away because no one was working. So I had nobody to compete with. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to you know, turn up at a party and be what I thought everybody wanted me to be. You know, it was it was the perfect time, really, to go through the worst part of the menopause because I just had to stay at home. Yeah. And apart from my poor husband, who probably, you know, could feel that I was murderous most of the days, it, it worked it worked quite well. But yeah, that that feeling of of anxiety and no confidence and is is just horrible, especially for you know, strong women like us, it suddenly takes you by surprise. You go, how, where, where have I gone? You know, yeah. what's happened to me? But the good thing is that it does come back and it just takes a while, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And there is light, there is light. And, and, and that's why, you know, I do what I do, um, which yeah. is like this ridiculous, but, and, and, and to make things relatable because, you know, at the end of the day, the menopause is not an illness. Um, yeah, that's, that's something I've learned through these wonderful doctors that I do um, quite a bit of work for. They're, they're called the menopause consultancy. And there are all these myths that are out there that HRT is really bad for you and you can only take it for five years. And there's a massively high risk of breast cancer. These days, all the HRT that you're taking or that gets prescribed is bioidentical. So in fact, it's, it totally replicates what your body would normally have produced. Yeah. And there is talk at the moment, funny enough, and I've just, just seen little snippets on the internet that the menopause should actually be renamed. Um, either estrogen deficiency or because the other thing we've got to remember is that hormones aren't just always reproductive you know there are hormones in your brain that your adrenaline is a hormone insulin yeah. is a hormone and I mean have you had any issues with gaining weight around your middle yeah oh god yes hence the peloton bike <laughs> you just getting fuck off? yeah it's so annoying I it is so annoying it's it's all around my it's just middle fat yeah yeah. And have you, is that something you've never had a problem with in the past, purely since the menopause? Yeah, it's purely since the menopause. I just suddenly started, I tell you, my friends and I who are all menopausal, we call it the thickening. Oh, yes. See, I call it. it sounds like a horror film, doesn't it? The thickening. In <laughs> fact, we should make a film about women with the thickening. But it's just like, oh, we've just got thicker. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it weird? Because that's the, you know, we all love the hourglass figure. I mean, I'd, I've never had a waist in fairness. I, I'm the human lamppost. So that, <laughs> but now, and I've said this to many people, I think Google Maps are about a week away from actually naming me a roundabout. You know, <laughs> <laughs> because I've, not only have I lost, I mean, I never had the waist in the first place. I've, and, and, um, but now I'm just you know a circle a circle but it is really really depressing because actually you can't wear anything apart from these i wear these look look at this i mean this is this a look like a caftan but yeah there it's, it's, it's a caftan and it can sort of double up as a blanket the dog can use it later <laughs> layers <laughs> layers always layers. lots of layers yeah yeah exactly exactly but you know you can starve yourself you can exercise you can do i mean and and i, I this is where i get um Oh, I'm going to call it mildly pissed off um, with yeah. these perfect women who say, look, you can actually, you know, get this flat stomach. You can fuck off, you know, fuck really? Off. I want to live. There's no way. No, I know. And also, if you if you really went for that flat stomach, you you like so your life is gone. Yeah, there would be no, no drinking, no snacking, no going out to parties. Uh, you know, you would be in the gym constantly. You would have to live like a nun. It's impossible. We get to a certain age and there's you just have to live with the figure you've got. I mean, I do think, though, that I spoke to a lady actually um, about when was it about three weeks ago? Because I'm on this health kick at the moment because I drank so much over Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was you know my nose was getting dimply <laughs> it was awful I, love uh, I was a shade of burgundy that I didn't like so um I started to go on a health kick and and so I'm not going to drink January February March and oh, um, I spoke, so very good. I know for me unbelievable and um I I spoke to this lovely nutritionist who um talked to me about what you should and shouldn't eat 
for the menopause and what exercise you should do and all sorts of things. And she was really refreshing to talk to because she wasn't one of those kind of, you know, you've got to do loads of cardio and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. She was like, you know, you do what you, what makes you feel good at the moment. Do you know, if you want to just do a walk, do a walk or do some cycling, don't do anything that's uh, running or anything like that because you're too old. And I was like, okay, that hurt a little bit, but she was right. <laughs> you know, do low, imp low impact exercise and just little tiny bursts of exercise to sort of try and keep your body as fit and healthy as possible. Don't try and aim for some impossible body image that, you know, you're not going to get. It's more about psychologically how you feel about the body that you have now, really. And I thought, God, that was really good because I do. I look at the Internet sometimes and go, I want to look like um, that person. I will look. I'm never going to look like that person. You know, I'm five for eight. I'm a size 12. I'm, you know, I've got big boobs. I'm never going to be a skinny little model. And I'm certainly not going to be now at my age. You've just got to love what you've got, haven't you? And as long as you feel fit and healthy inside, I think that really helps with the menopause. It certainly helped since I stopped drinking and since I've started doing all this weird, look at that. But what is that? That looks, I mean, yeah, cat I'm not going to say like what sick, doesn't it? It's got a lot of turmeric in it. Oh, that's good. That's good. I, mean, I'm, I would love to say it's delicious. It's not delicious, but it does feel like um, I'm drinking something good. It's got, yeah, it's got turmeric in it. It's 26 essential vitamins and minerals fresh carrot, ginger, all sorts of things. So I have a couple of those a day and then a light meal and I do a bit of exercise every day and I do feel better. And I take lots of supplements as well now, which I never did before. And I, and I tell you what you will find, and I hate myself for saying this because I love drinking, but yeah. drinking does actually add to the anxiety, doesn't it? You know, you, you, it, uh, you're, that's why I was so, this time last year, I was so down and I'm sure it was because I was drinking. I mean, no, I was drinking too much, do you know what I mean? And uh, it's it has helped. It's helped my brain fog and it's helped me feel more confident because I think before, if something did go wrong, I would get in such a panic about it. And whereas now I'm calmer, you know, I'm just calmer about it. So there is a lot to be said, I think, for what you put in your body and how your body helps you, you know, through things like this. But you, then again, I don't want to be one of those boring old bastards that looks at people drinking going, mm, you're having a drink, are you? Mm. <laughs> so, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think which I'm rapidly becoming. Boring, I don't think there's any chance of you being a boring old bastard, sir. Ever. Well, I, you know, I keep saying, look, come April, I, I will be back to my old self, staggering around the garden, covered in my own vomit. <laughs> <laughs> and this, my darling, is why I love you. <laughs> it is, it is, it is so true. And 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 at the end of the day, you know what is lovely about talking to someone like you um, is that you know a vast majority of the people will know the Sarah Parish that they've seen on screen. You're a human being. The menopause, as I say, is not an illness, and also there's no side door that we can kind of swerve around. We've all got to go through it, and actually every woman has to go through it and it's about how you cope with it and it's about making it real and I've tried to make it funny for people you've made it funny for us today and, and I am so grateful for that um and I, you know as I say lack of memory brain fog all that crap that goes with it it is utter shite isn't it let's let, let's oh. call it anything else it is. It's the worst. We have such a rough deal. We have periods and we have to go through childbirth and we have the menopause. It's like, when does it give up? Then we grow a beard. <laughs> you know, it's like, where did that come from? Yeah, November. I take it you seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a real ball ache, really. Do you know what I mean? But there is light at the end of the tunnel, like you said. And it's good to make make it funny you know and be able to share stories like this and read your blog and and do little skypes with people and, and zoom to people i just think it's really important because there are people out there that will be in a real state at the moment you know and really panicking and yeah. not knowing what's going on and thinking this is it i've gone nuts and you know nothing it, it, nobody else feels like this so to have this kind of interaction with women that are going through the same thing is really important, I think.
Yeah, no, talking about it and breaking the stigma. I mean, one of the questions I've always wanted to ask you, you've probably got um, actresses that are of a similar age who you've been mates with for years, because I know that you, you, how long have you been an actress for? 15, 20 years? God, no, um, 20, 30 years, 32 years. Wow. And when was Cutting It made? Because, oh my God, I loved that. I, I know, that. that was filmed the first series was filmed in 2001 so 20 years ago 20 years ago so you and I would imagine that all of that cast are still mates of yours oh they are we all get on really well Amanda Angela little Lucy who played my daughter we're all um Lisa Faulkner she wasn't in it but uh, Nicola um, uh, uh, Stevenson we're all very very good friends yeah and so it's I, great we, do you guys talk about I mean they must be heading towards that age or have they gone through it do you talk do you about know what it? they're at, they're they're a bit younger than me I was the eldest in cutting it so um and yet you were the bombshell all the men wanted okay. you <laughs> correct <laughs> no I wasn't Amanda was yeah, the bombshell yeah. we were all gorgeous but um uh, yeah, no, I don't think they have. They're still, and and all that lot are still 46, 47. So oh, they, I've got to move in on them. I've, they're I've creeping into it. By the time they get into it, I'll be like, <laughs> I'll be out of it. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you'll be the life and soul and, of the party and then I'll be sitting yeah. in the floor rocking backwards and forwards. <laughs> foaming in. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, well, listen, my no, darling, no, yeah. I, I cannot thank you enough for talking to us today because you know what at the end of the day sharing is is such a great way of, of bringing it you know to, to we're all going to go through it we're, we're all yeah. lots of us are going through it and you know the one thing I want to say to you is um what you're doing with the Murray Parish Trust um, because I don't know how you pack it all in I really don't Sarah and her gorgeous husband Jim um run this amazing charity called the Murray Parish Trust, which is, funnily enough, um, I was born down in, in Eastleigh, but um, my grandma had something to do with Southampton Hospital, and for the freaking life of me, the old blood menopause brain fog, I can't remember what it was, but it was it's yeah. all to do with the paediatrics ward of Southampton Hospital. It is, it's, well, it's to do with the children's um, hospital at Southampton, not just the paediatric intensive care it's sort of uh, it's all all of the um children's departments and at the moment we well previously we managed to build and open the brand new um CETD the children's emergency department which is is only two years old now it's amazing it services the whole of the south of England that was a five million pound project so that's done and dusted wow. and now we're trying to raise um again an, an, another enormous amount of money it's gone down actually from 5 million to about 2.8 because my husband did some very clever work with the NHS and managed to because of Covid actually um, the NHS got a lot of money back because of Covid the government wrote off a lot of their debts so we managed to get some of that money towards our appeal so it went down from 5 million to 2.8 which is great uh, so we've got 2.8 million to raise to get a lovely MRI scanner, eye MRI scanner, which goes inside an operating theatre. So a brain surgeon can um, wheel the patient in and out of the MRI whilst operating on them. So it's it's very revolutionary. Usually the child has to be sewn up, go and have a, another MRI, come back down again, and they have to have multiple operations. With this, they'll only have to have one operation, Fantastic. which is great. So. But yeah, so we've we've got a long way to go, but we've got some great things ahead. We're doing a big art open open air art exhibition in Winchester in 2022 called Wild in Art, which will be great in Winchester. I've just said that, haven't I? What else are we doing? We're doing a big cycle across the whole of the south of England with a lovely man called Alex Lewis, who is a quadruple amputee. So if he can cycle it, I can cycle it. <laughs> so we're kind of, he's got a special bike that he sort of plugs into. He's going to cycle from what, you know, this uh, one end of the south of England to the other. It's about okay. 700 kilometers. And I'm going to do it with him. So that will be exciting. So and lots I'm of living in hope this is going to get filmed, right? That it will be filmed. Yeah. We'll, we'll, both of the events will be filmed. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, good luck. And my love, thank you so much for this and oh, well done you, you you're getting through it you're shining and um looking, 
far too fucking beautiful for my liking. <laughs> the light, Johnny. I've got very good light coming in here. <laughs> but lots of love and um good luck with the, the um, it's fabulous news that you guys are all back and filming again that's just great i know it's great we badly need something to take our minds off this because i am going completely bonkers here um oh well Ed, there's some good Ed, stuff Ed, coming out Ed's outside slumped on the in the back garden dogs him up again yeah <laughs> <laughs> lots of love to you and um take care and we'll talk again soon and you let me know when any of more of the cast of cutting it start hitting that point and they need some to talk to yeah and i'll pass them on to you <laughs> pass them on to me i'll deal with them i'll get them sorted <laughs> no problem but lots of love you look absolutely beautiful and it's so lovely to talk to you and thank you for your time thank you darling big hug Bye. lots of love <laughs> i have no idea this. watch me fucking useless how do you turn it off <laughs> you can just press record oh fuck <laughs> 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 you later.